Well, hi, this is Mike Zipser with Fast Forward. Welcome to another Fast Forward Zoom. And joining me this time is Laura Ann Gilman from Seattle and Keith Canada from New York City, the hot spot. <laughs> yeah. So first off, how are you guys doing through all this? What's happening in Seattle? Uh, well, it's interesting because Seattle was one of the first places to realize that something was going very bad. Uh, and our mayor and governor kind of shut us down pretty fast. Uh, at first it was a suggestion, everybody stay the hell at home. And then it was an order, but people kind of, we joke that we've been practicing this for years because of the Seattle freeze, which is this um, claim that Seattle people are kind of passive aggressive friendly. Uh, and that we don't really like to go out. And we don't really like to socialize. And here we're like, oh, stay home, not interact with people. We got this. Uh, <laughs> but it's, um, we're taking it seriously. It's been pretty scary. I'm not going to lie. Um, especially uh, someone like me, I was in the hospital in November. So uh, I'm considered a net risk person. So yeah, we're, we're taking it seriously and staying home and, and social distancing. Yeah. Yeah, we're high risk in this house too, because we're old and I've got high blood pressure and Beth has diabetes, so we're real careful. Keith, what is happening in New York? Um, not a lot or too much, depending on how you look at it. Um, we're, you know, I mean, from, from my point of view, we're just, you know, staying in as much as humanly possible. Um, most of the stores that provide essential things like food are doing curbside pickup of some sort. Um, we in particular have been making an effort to do most of our shopping as we normally do anyway from uh, the small family businesses in the Little Italy section of the Bronx, which are hurting a lot more um, during this whole mess. Um, generally people are being smart about it in new york there's always you know some idiots because we have a lot of people in new york and the law of averages is that some of them are going to be morons <laughs> but the vast majority of people i have seen out on those vanishingly rare occasions when i go outside is um people are wearing masks people are keeping their distances you know um and it's a lot easier to do right now because most people are staying in anyhow so yeah. it's a lot easier to, to stay away from other people the businesses are all being smart about it as far as I've seen um and you know it's not exactly a representative sampling and I don't know how I'm lucky in that um I'm in a neighborhood that is relatively isolated in the Bronx um there are other neighborhoods that are less so and I don't know how if they're doing as well and what's especially frustrating is that you know we're not hearing very many street noises the street noises we do hear are ambulances and cops Sirens. Cops, especially yeah, ambulances yeah. because we're we're, we're unfortunate located right near two hospitals. We're right in the middle section between two different branches of Montefiore Hospital here in New York. So we're right near where the ambulances are gonna be going anyway. Um, and, you know, it's, we're, we're, we're plugging away. We're, we're, I mean, we're, yeah. we're, we're at least in decent shape. We're, um, uh, from a writing perspective, I'm still doing all the stuff I was doing. You know, yeah. um, uh, I, I still have, my novel deadlines have not changed. Um, my writing obligations for Tor.com have not changed. In fact, I'd argue they've become more important because webs I do a lot of writing about pop culture for Tor.com. Yeah. Right now I'm doing a rewatch of Star Trek Voyager um, twice a week. Stuff like that is essential right now because people are stuck at home and they need crap to read. And a website is in a unique position in that it can still be produced by people who are all staying home. So, yeah, I still go to my the websites I get went to all the time. It's mm -hmm. that hasn't changed. Right. Um, so, um, and and the and and a lot of writing I'm doing is for the small press, and the small press has not been as badly affected. That's uh, because again, most of them work, most of them do this from their homes anyway, um, and a lot the vast majority of their sales are in ebook form. So the the issues of printing and distribution are lessened. They they still exist, obviously, but. Um, but you know, I'm the work I'm doing for eSpec Books and for Wordfire Press is still a going concern. So. Yeah, I've noticed that Danielle um, Ackley McPhail is like pushing your stuff really hard, which is cool. Well, yeah, we got a Kickstarter going right now. Yeah, I know. It's really nice. Yeah. And Lauren, you, you've been doing yeah. an isolation sale for your stuff. Yeah, what I did, um, I'm a hybrid. So I've got the New York publishing side and then I have what I refer to as the owner operator publishing rather than indie publishing. 
Uh, and when this all started, I realized people wanted to read, but people were also feeling a real crunch uh, on the income. A lot of people uh, are the furloughed or they weren't sure. So I took a look at all the things I had uh, control of, my, my self-published stuff, and I'm doing a rolling sale for as long as we're under lockdown, uh, half price sale. So every two weeks, something goes off sale, something comes on sale, so that people have constantly something else. Uh, and I've gotten a really good reaction to it, not just in terms of sales, but people like, oh my God, thank you. Um, <laughs> People were talking about the fact that they were having trouble reading novels, trouble focusing. So I'm like, all right, that's it. All the short story collections are on sale. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, I, I mean, I'm doing the same thing. I'm reading a lot of shorter works, novellas, because it's allowing me to, to, to focus. Um, for me, uh, I handed in a book to my New York publisher, Simon & Schuster. Uh, I have no idea when it's actually going to be published at this point. Um, they have it. When things get back to whatever normal becomes, then I'll know more. But yeah, Could you I've been. Say anything about it? It is um, set during the Gilded Age in upstate New York. Cool. Um, a um, brother and sister who get uh, caught up in. Um, A supernatural mystery. Uh, them and their hellhound get caught up in a supernatural <laughs> mystery. As uh, happens. It was, of, it was it was a lot of fun actually. The the, the creating the hellhound line was was a blast. Uh, and it's it's a it's a one off as opposed to a lot of things I've been doing. At least for now, it's a one off, which was interesting. I have not written a standalone novel in a long time. It's a long long time, yeah. <laughs> Was trying, when you I'm mentioned also, that, I was trying to think, when was the last standalone she did? And I couldn't think off the, the answer. The answer is yeah. the, the, the paranormal romances. That was pretty much it. I'm also, for myself, um, writing a couple of novellas in various genres, writing short stories for a number of places like uh, Border Shop Quarterly and, and things like that, uh, working on a joint novel. I haven't collaborated in a while. Can and you say who you're course, collaborating with? Uh, Tina Jens. She's huh. a um, horror writer I've known through from the horror field. But um, the novel involves a, um, a musician, a, a jazz and blues musician who gets tangled up in the supernatural and um, a little bit of Kabbalist, Kabbalistic theory. Tina has the uh, the musical knowledge, I have the theology knowledge, so we're having a lot of fun kind of collaborating on this. Uh, and how is that technically working? Because it's not like, well, we'll go to the coffee shop and hang well, especially out. Especially since I'm in Seattle and she's in Chicago. Uh, well, we, you could find a coffee shop in, I don't know, Kansas or something. Um, well, yeah, we're, we're, yeah it's, it's set uh, it's partially in St. Louis, so maybe that's where we'll be going. But we, uh, we talk a lot online. It's a lot of throwing things back and forth. Um, we're not on any great deadline on this. This is something we're doing because we both really believe in this idea so we can take it as it comes. And of course, I've got my Patreon going yeah. where um, they expect, I've got nonfiction for them. I've got fiction, uh, we have an ongoing serial. So yeah, I'm keeping myself real busy, uh, which is good, good because yeah, let's busy is good. Yeah, let, let's talk about Patreons yeah. for a minute, because you both have Patreons, and that's something that's yes. really come to the fore in the last number of years. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, I have yeah. members of a lot of different Patreons, cause, and it's a great thing. But how good is it for the, for the writers and the artists and the people doing the creating? I think Patreon supports artists better than it does writers in a lot of ways. Um, but for me, at least, it's been really great in that not only am I required to get them stuff every month, which I work really well on deadlines. Oh, look, I owe them something. I need to sit down and focus and, and get this written um, because I'm the second laziest human being in the world. I'd be the first laziest, except it's too much work. And for me... <laughs> Took you guys a while to get that one. Uh, for me, 
every month I have to write a rant yep. for them, which is great fun. I was able to take the the, the collection and, and publish it because I have strong opinions. Um, and people I didn't really, know that. <laughs> people really <laughs> enjoy this and, and get a lot of feedback and the uh, the short fiction is something I wouldn't necessarily be doing otherwise, because right now trying to send it out to magazines is just a lot of stress. But knowing that they're waiting for it, I I feel a lot more creative. Yeah. So I'm really enjoying it, but it also allows me to uh, hear back from them. Mm. A lot of times I'll be like, okay, guys, feedback, come on, tell me, and boom, I get reactions which is amazing. I mean, writers generally have to wait a year before we get yeah. feedback. And here I'm getting it, you know, two days later. Yep. Now, Keith, your Patreon, are you getting the same kind of feedback, same kind of thing going on with it? On your Patreon, not, Keith? I'm not getting that much feedback, just likes here and there, which is fine. You know, I'm, I'm what I've been doing with it is, um, it's, it's been an outlet to do TV and movie reviews um that i that for whatever reason don't go on tour.com um and still giving me an opportunity to actually you know babble about stuff uh and i've also been posting cat pictures which of course is yes. probably the most popular <laughs> thing on there i noticed um, that and and i also but my favorite part i mean i've also been doing like excerpts of american progress and for people who spend a lot of money they get a, a first look at my first drafts of things so that's been and 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 i don't get a lot of Verbal feedback, but I've been getting, you know, encouraging like people liking it and people saying this is cool. I'm glad to see it and stuff like that. Um, the fun part has been uh, I've been doing vignettes featuring my original characters. Um, I've got several different um, series going. The Precinct series. I've got two different urban fantasy series. Uh, my Super City Cop series and and um, my Shirley Holmes and Jack Watson series, and all of them. I've been I've done vignettes in all of them, just little little scenes, and it's fun. It's a great way to explore the characters a little bit and and do things in the world that wouldn't necessarily fit in a novel or a short story, but just are amusing little scenes to do. Um, yeah, you, you've also been doing um, on YouTube doing readings. Yes. During during your isolation. Doing, yeah. That yes, I call it yeah. crad COVID readings. It's uh, that's something I specifically <laughs> started once once the pandemic hit. Uh, which is just to you know provide people with some entertainment that I've gotten some much more direct feedback on. Yeah. Um, people have really appreciated that, and I've been just sticking with short fiction because, like Lauren said before, you know people aren't burdened with huge attention spans right now. Um, <laughs> but uh, so I've been I've been sticking with short stories. I tried something this past week where I did I broke up one of my longer short stories into five installments, um, so they weren't all done at once, so people could get them in, in smaller bits. Mm -hmm. um, and that that's been fun. I love I love doing readings. It's one of my favorite things to do when I go to conventions. And and yeah. uh, and YouTube is a good vehicle for that. And it's been yeah, fun. It, and I got to revisit people, actually some stories that I wrote like twenty five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of <laughs> people have been don't using, suck as much as I would. A lot of people have been doing the readings. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know that a couple of folks have been doing it live on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I have I've only done a couple. Uh, I also have a YouTube channel. Uh, mainly because I was ill for a while. We don't know whether it was the plague or not, but I was um, pretty sick and had no voice whatsoever. Um, I call mine Auntie Meerkat story time. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a whole bunch, you know, small things, some stories, some bits. I did a live reading for my patrons at one point so that they got they got to hear something that nobody else has heard before that's not published. Um, I'm also going to be doing something that's fun that we we just um, put together, which is a bunch of writers are going to be reading each other's work. Like <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> um, I I just got my my partner. I'm not going to say who it is. All I'm going to say is I took one look and went, <laughs> I need to do justice to this person. Um, so that's going to be fun. I'm not sure when that's rolling out, but we're we we just came up with it over the past week because that's fun. Also, yeah. it's just to, to read somebody else's work and be able to give it life in your own way. Um, and you guys are both good readers. I mean, you when you, you I've been to readings that both of you have done, and they're always good. They're always fun. They're lively. You you guys work at this. You're not just coming out there reading cold. You you no. 
put some work in. You guys are professional. <laughs> no, if, if I were to if I were to come out and re and read cold, um, it would have to get an adult rating because you know halfway through I'd be like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. Even when I'm even when I'm doing readings in bookstores and stuff like that, I'm always like, okay, is there anybody under the age of fifteen here? Okay, good. Um, you know, I, yeah. I, I originally a New Yorker, so you know, I still have the still have a voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 an issue for me, not just uh, with the quality of the reading, but the the language and the stories themselves. Yeah. Um, a lot of the a lot of the original probably because I've written so much media tie-in work where I'm not allowed to use foul language. So in my original work, uh, uh, there tends to be a lot of profanity for that reason. Plus, I write about you know, cops I, a lot. Yeah, cops yeah. that's okay. I could, I've been challenged to read a sex scene, so uh, oh, I, I, there I may have to be burden involved. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I can read somebody else's sex scene, no problem. But one <laughs> I've written. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and you both have written mysteries. And something I was yeah. wondering was, one thing was, do you think that the isolation and the, the quarantining and all that is going to affect what the writers are going to be writing once we're out of this? Because we know that everything is grist for the mill. Yeah. Whatever happens to a writer can show up in a book, anything, anybody, nobody is safe. So do you, do you expect to see isolation writing and oh, sure. things yeah. like that? It has to. Yeah. I, I think yes and no. I think that, yeah, everything is grist for the mill. But the thing about the mill is that it takes what was and changes it into something else. So you're not going to, I don't think, see, except maybe in Litvik, a direct translation of what we're going through. First of all, because that's not how yeah. it generally works. Second of all, because nobody's going to want to read it for a while. Yeah. We lived it. But yeah. I'm wondering yeah. in the fantasy and the supernatural stuff, what kind of th things you think might show up from this? And also, I was wondering about mysteries. Mm. In the mystery, and because it's be hard to do a mystery. <laughs> mystery readers tend to be a little bit more traditional and a little bit more. Um, focused on what they read. I suspect what you're going to see is not a change in the types of mystery. We might even actually see more of a throwback to traditional styles, but writers are going to be able to bring a lot more um, of the emotion of, of, I think we might see some darker mysteries because that's what we're going through and readers are going to resonate to that. Not necessarily a direct translation, but an interpretation of isolation, of fear, of uncertainty that kind of thing. Same as coming out of World War II, you saw a very specific kind of mystery. Um, not just a throwback to when things were more comforting, but an understanding of the fact that the world is a very scary place. Saw it after 9-11 too, to some extent. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, yeah. it's, it's the sort of thing that it's hard to say exactly what effect it's going to have because everybody responds differently to it. It is going to affect people just because it, it affects the way you think to some degree or other, and that's going to affect how you write. What form that take is going to vary from writer to writer. Some people are going to, you know, die full tilt into it and, and go to the darker place. Some are going to be die full tilt in the other direction into pure escapism and pretend it never happened. We've you been know, having like, a lot of pretend. discussions about this uh, amongst a number of science fiction and fantasy writers. We're talking about what we think people yeah. are going to want to read in yeah. the future. Less about craft and more about business side of, okay, what are, yeah. what are people going to want to? And opinions are really split. And I think that's an indication of what the readership is going to be like. People are going to be split, split of some people, as Keith said, are going to want to dive into it or want to, they deal with it by reading about it, or they're more interested now in alternative ways that things can play out. And a lot of people are going to be like, you know, life is really tough. Give me a fun, epic fantasy quest. Give me humor. Give me love and, and affection and all these things. I need that right now both of which are completely valid. Mm -hmm. um, I know one, that right now- One of the things uh, I- Go ahead, Kate. I'm sorry, I, did, I, I, I was just thinking- oh, like, like we've never interrupted each other before. Yeah, yeah never. never. <laughs> um, one, of the, uh, one of the things that I'm, I'm, that's coming up for me to do is the next book in my urban fantasy series that takes place in the Bronx, which is where I live. And that's gonna be really interesting to write because 
you know, I mean, I have to basically write it as if it takes place before this all happens because there's really no other, you know. Um, well, I, I can and, get and, that trauma. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it, but it's it's a challenge. You know, it's supposed to be the contemporary Bronx yeah. and the contemporary Bronx is completely different now from what I've been writing. Um, you know, if I go going back to my fantasy series, which is an, an epic, a made up epic fantasy setting, that's easy. I can plug right into that. Um, but but those writing, are my next two novels and that's like Ugh. i'm writing a slightly supernatural romance novella <laughs> yeah so basically i have people touching a lot <laughs> and dating well, <laughs> so it's a historical romance I, I, novel. I, seriously i'm gonna have a little, little disclaimer all this happened in december 2019 <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've noticed just, that when i'm like watching contemporary tv mm -hmm. shows when there's things on like i've watched the rookie because yeah. it's yes. making fill yeah. in and, and i'm watching it and we're sitting there going don't do that <laughs> why are they standing so close yeah yes, move away um, yeah it, that matter, it, got... it, it does it does mess with your mind a little bit and this whole sense of um do i adapt or do i i mean i'm i'm very curious to see what romance writers are going to be doing um uh, <laughs> because there is a sense of, we want to remember, and we want to see what was normal. We want that back desperately. And whether we're gonna get it back in the next year or so, we don't know. But when I'm writing this, what I kept thinking is, I don't want people to forget that this is good and healthy. Um, so it's, it's a fine line that I'm walking with this story in, in a number of ways. Um, and it's also something I haven't done in a while. So that's giving myself a, a new challenge is really an important thing right now. Yeah. So let me ask you a completely different question. With having to stay at home and all this, what is the one or two things that you miss the most about having to stay home? Keith, why don't people. you start? People? People. I miss people. I'm an extrovert. Um, I was going to say, you're getting an extrovert and an introvert to answer. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah I know. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> well, I, I asked mean, it. I mean, I live down the street from my parents and I can't get that close to them because they're all, they're over 70, you know, and, and, and at risk. My, my mother, my mother um, is very much an at-risk person because of some medical issues she's had. Um, so I've got to, you know, I'm, 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 when I do go outside, I have to stay six feet away from people. And the only people I'm seeing are the people who work in stores that sell food. Um, I, especially the last two years, I've been going to a lot of conventions, both on my own and with Bart's Tower. Um, I, I, I did like over 20 conventions each of the last two years. I love that feedback. I love that interacting with people and I love meeting new people and I love re-encountering old people and I love our regular poker games and I love our, you know, getting together with friends to drink wine or to have dinner. You know, I, I miss all that. So, yeah. Yeah. Lorraine, what about you, being the introvert? Um, in a lot of ways, my life has not changed. Uh, yeah, I'm not getting together for dinner with friends. I'm not going in. I have a, um, a part-time office job mainly to get myself out of the house, and I'm having to do that work from home now. Uh, the two things I really miss. Um, one is I was volunteering twice a week at our local animal shelter. And I really, really miss that. I miss going to work with the dogs. Um, matter of fact, I, I said that on, online this morning and I've already had two people volunteer to drop their puppies off for me to puppy sit. Yay. Um, I miss that. I miss the, the getting out, the doing of things, the taking care of those animals, seeing the people that I work with there, um, not as a social thing, but simply because we were there, we were doing this good thing, we felt good about it, um, and I miss the puppies. The other thing, my mom died in January um, after an illness, and my, my dad died a number of years ago. Both my sisters are on the East Coast. Um, the last time I saw them was for my mom's funeral, and before that I had I'd seen my sister, when oldest sister, when she came out to take care of me when I was in the hospital. Um, I really miss my family. I, I have a great life here. I have a lot of friends. I have a chosen family here, but I miss my sisters. 
and talking to them on the phone and, and, and Skyping and Zooming with them. My brother-in-law made a joke about, you know, next time we come out to visit, which will probably be 2022. And I was just kind of like, ow. Um, you know, Keith was saying, you know, he, he can't get close to his parents. I can't even see them. Yeah. And, you know, when I moved out here, I knew I wasn't going to get to see them on a regular basis, but not being able to go there is really hard. Oh, I bet. I can understand that. Because we don't see our family. They're there was one nearby. other thing I also meant. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to mention uh, something I haven't been, the one thing that I, that I am not doing is teaching. I teach karate to kids uh, yeah. three days a week, except I don't right now. Um, we've still, my dojo has still been doing virtual karate classes over Zoom. Um, we've been we've been having regular classes, so I get to do karate in my living room and watch everybody else do it in their living room. But I'm not teaching anymore. I'm not teaching the after school. I really, really miss the kids. I really miss teaching them and working with them and stuff. And um, that's 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 been one of the hardest things too. You know, I love teaching and I just, I, I that that is the one thing that this has taken completely away from me that I miss. The one thing I have noticed, um, Keith was mentioning, and I have another friend, mutual friend Jana, who is very much an extrovert. Yeah. And for the first time in my life, I'm like, oh my God, it must be horrible to be an extrovert because you guys are suffering. And we joke that there, there are three kinds of people. There are the extroverts who are just losing their crap over all this. And then the other end, they're the introverts. And I have, I mean, the major introverts who won't even come to Zoom parties because they're like, no, no, I'm good. I don't need to see anybody. For me, as a social introvert, I love this in a lot of ways because I get to see people, I get to hang out, and then I turn <laughs> off my computer, I'm already home in my pajamas. And I've said to a number of people, especially friends who do not live in the area, we need to keep doing this when this is over. Um, yeah. I have friends in the UK. I have friends in Chicago. I have uh, friends uh, back in New York. And we're seeing more of each other now than we have in a long time. And we're allowing friendships to sort of reconnect and deepen again. And I love that. Um, it's, you know, if there is a silver lining for me, it's that this has forced us to say, okay, what is important? Friends are important. Keep in touch with them. Um, touch base, share with each other. And like I said, I hope we don't lose that when we are allowed to go back to normal yeah we've we've Sorry, done a couple of it. we've done a couple of family get-togethers over zoom recently for particular reasons and but these are people we'd see maybe once a year maybe less than that because the family scattered you know sacramento and kentucky and minnesota and iowa and just all over and this way we're seeing them and talking to one and, and seeing I gave, the I gave kids. Up my, my West Coast Sunday brunch to meet with you guys. So <laughs> oh. everyone from California all the way up to Vancouver, we meet for brunch, plus somebody out in Texas. Um, and I've heard of like happy hours. Yes. And we've we've kept our D and D game going on Zoom. Mm -hmm. In fact, we've increased it. We, it was it was monthly, and we're now doing it every other week. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't quite, at least we have on the West Coast haven't figured out how to do the poker game on <laughs> Our poker game, I was thinking the same thing of trying to figure out a way to do the poker game. We haven't, we haven't figured it out. We, we, yeah. we have a way of doing it. I'll send you guys the link to the site we're using. All right. Oh, okay, please do. Can, an interactive site where you can all like manipulate the cards and stuff. Oh, um, cool. We, we, we've been doing it. We, we, we tested it Friday night and it worked. Can um, you play different um, kinds of games? You can play any kind of game you want. Oh, Even send the link. Some of the stupid games you guys used to play. I mean, it's just, it's yeah. Just, all it is is an interactive site that basically allows you to manipulate a deck of cards. Oh, and anybody send the who's link. on the site can manipulate them. Yeah, so we've you been, can, we've you been can doing, do that. Um, I'll, I'll... Yeah, we, we've been doing <laughs> the um, uh, watch and, and snark movie nights. Oh, I mm -hmm. saw you did um, Robin, Robin Hood. Robin Prince of Thieves last night. Yeah. Oh, I am oh, so God. sorry. <laughs> it actually was not Why as bad you... as we remembered it, but the bourbon probably. <laughs> oh God, you posted well, I, that. It could be worse. Like... I made them watch Ghost Rider, so you know. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. This is like self torture. 
Ooh, no, not only does that what I was getting paid for. Yeah, it's um, it's adapting, and this is what people yeah. do: we adapt. Um, as a, as a science fiction writer and as somebody who's trained in uh, social history, it's been fascinating to watch. I actually wrote an essay, which I need to find something to do with it, um, about the things I learned from my illness when I was recovering from surgery and how they're being applied now. All these things that we're adapting into how we see the world. Um, and that I think for a writer, especially looking at how things are changing uh, emotionally, physically, politically, socially is fascinating. And I have no idea, you asked before, how it's going to all end up getting used. And I have no idea because there's so much being dumped into our heads right now. Yeah. And we're just starting to uh, adapt to it. Yeah. And I mean, all the people saying, oh, we need to go back, we need to go back. And I'm like, Whatever the new normal is, it's not going to be the old normal. Yeah. And that's, that's never, just it never is. It. Yeah. That's right. It never is. It's, it's and, been interesting watching. I've been, uh, I've been doing a lot of binge watching of TV shows because what the hell else am I going to do? And um, the, right. it's been great, actually. I've been catching up with it. One of the things I've been watching right now is a show uh, from the early 2000s called Foils War, which was a British show yeah. about a detective who was in England during World War II, like right in the middle of it. He was an older man, so he wasn't fighting. Um, and he was working as a detective in Hastings in England. And looking at that right now, in light of what's happening now with, with everything that, that the UK was going through, the show started in 1940 and, and has been working its way forward um, through the war. You know, the shortages, the rationing, you know, the, the living with the possibility of getting bombed every single day, um, all the able-bodied men and some of the able-bodied women going off uh, to, to fight or, or work for the war effort um, and just everything, you know, the, the, the sheer weight of, of what that war did to the UK and it, it's telling, you know, and, and things were different after that. They did get back to normal eventually, but it was a different normal than the normal before that. Yeah. You know, you know what, I, what I always jokingly refer to it, this was the war after the war and, and all wars. Yeah. Um, this was the war that still which, which didn't was alone a, a, yeah. a refutation of normal yeah 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 and i mean we're doing this for fast forward i'm we were sitting there going well what can we do for fast forward to content there's people we want to talk to we did some skype interviews before and yes. Kathy said well we yeah. can get <laughs> yeah you've done that when we can we said well we could use zoom and and get some people on and do that and so we started doing it and we're saying we can keep doing this we can get people <laughs> yeah. from all over we got seattle and new york on friday we had uh california and the netherlands mm -hmm. on nice and i'm work you know going to talk to some artists in england and get some this is also you know. spreading to conventions there was a convention yes. this weekend uh that a friend of mine was was helping to run uh, which they kind of threw together pretty fast. And I was like, yeah, you guys, you guys do that. I've got, I, I just couldn't. Um, but it is changing how conventions are going. Uh, Con Carolina is just canceled, but they canceled the live portion and they're going to start right. rolling out digital elements. Yep. And people are talking about how we keep these digital elements to the conventions and bring in people who, for whatever reason, couldn't make it either cost or just physical inability and open things up. Um, again, the nebula I mentioned uh, before with mom that I'm working, um, helping to test test drive a couple of projects for the nebulas, which is entirely digital this year. And if that works, it will allow more people to participate. And yep. these are things that we, yep. we maybe could have done before, but we didn't have the time or resources to allocate to it. And now that we have to, we're not going to just suddenly drop them when we're done. It's, it's um, interesting because this, is, a, this is, an outgrowth. Is, yeah. Yeah. this is an outgrowth of stuff that had already started happening. Um, DragonCon and Worldcon uh, have twice done things where they've done, but on, on mm -hmm. occasions when, when they were both, this, both Labor Day weekend, uh, they've twice done things where they had simultaneous panels where you would have a panel where half the panel was in wherever Worldcon was and half the panel was at DragonCon. Um, 
and that, I did one on media tie-ins when uh, with the Chicago World Con. It went great. And um, some guests like um, uh, Sir Terry Pratchett, one of the last disc, uh, disc, disc, con, disc world conventions, yeah. had to go in by Skype because he couldn't travel in. Um, Shore Leave had Leonard Nimoy on over Skype. Regeneration Who had Tom Baker on over Skype. And so they can, um, they can do that. Heliosphere uh, here in New York. Uh, last uh, earlier this month, and then next month, Balticon are also doing virtual. Yeah. Con you say Balticon's gone digital, and I know of another yeah. convention. And Con Carolinas, as, as Lorraine mentioned, also just announced that they're doing and Capclave. Yeah. And oh, uh, Capclave too. Yeah. Okay. I, is so. Capclave gone digital? I hadn't heard. They've, the last done, thing, they've I, done some live stuff. I know. Yeah. 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 Um, there's another convention that we they called us to talk over that they're going to be canceling going completely digital but not just the weekend of the convention they're going to go longer term yeah where they're going to do all kinds of things over months no. that are going to be digital yeah, well, not to get a, I've, I've been hearing about a, that and my first thought is that's exhausting <laughs> I, want, I want it to start and finish and i want to know when. Yeah. well it's not going to be every day all day for months it's going to be something yeah. here and then we'll set up yeah. a visit to this place and you know so they're working on it. Yeah, I don't want to say who it is because it hasn't been announced. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, there's so, still, you can't completely replicate that. You can't get the autograph experience. You can't get the, there are certain other elements that you don't get. But you can't sit still, at the bar. I, well, yeah, we're working and, on it's, that. But you it's better than your own booze, but yeah, we're working yes. on it. Yeah. Yes. And you can still buy things. You know, I mean, that that's honestly, that, that the, the people who are hit most by this are a lot of vendors who rely on yeah. conventions for their, yeah. for, their uh, yeah. for their ability to make a living and they're you know i mean thank <laughs> thank goodness for the internet man um this would this would be unbearable without it but um and at least provides options but um, but it also has pushed my firm belief that the internet needs to be a public utility yeah yeah um, and i'm it's hoping become, that's one it, of the things yeah. that we can push continuing going forward because there are too many cases where people did not have access and still don't have yeah. access. And this proved what a, a hardship, an unnecessary hardship that is. It should be a public utility. Especially this is how this is how schooling is happening now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, one of the things I was thinking. <laughs> Kathy, <laughs> Kathy chatted to me that Capclave has done live talks with China and South America mm -hmm. before. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> But yeah, that this is this is going to change society. And as writers who deal with the extrapolation of what our society is going to look like, it I get to use one of my favorite word, it behooves us to be paying attention to not only what's happening, but how people are reacting to it. Um, even I, I have friends who well, I don't like the internet, I don't want to be online. And I think they're realizing now that they are getting left behind. Yeah, I feel a great deal of behoovement. Mm -hmm. my 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 75 year old aunt uh called my father today to ask her ask him how zoom works because she never used i mean she only got an email account like five years ago um you know and and all this stuff is really hard for her because it's not what she is used to mm -hmm. um you know uh the the most complicated she ever got technologically was how to operate her vcr you know <laughs> um so this is this has been a really I mean she wants to she's trying to but it's it's hard for her just because it's not which yeah. is, but it's the only way she can see people right now she lives alone and, she's and you can't years and old. you can't even call for your usual tech support to come over and fix things yeah. for you exactly yeah I, yeah. yeah yeah that's a lot of things there's things we our tire went flat in our car and we called our people the people that take care of our car and they've set up where. We gave them the credit card number. They came. We left the keys in the car mm -hmm. when they yeah. called to say they were coming. They picked up the car. They took it. They fixed it. They brought it back. No contact at all. Yeah. But it got done. And this is all stuff they've had to come up with, you know, quickly to be able to keep in business. And you're seeing Maybe that in a lot of places. We can do when we absolutely have to. Yeah. 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 We're a pretty imaginative species and we figure out ways to get what we want. Yeah. yeah. To get things done when we have to. By the way, another thing about about this quarantine is that um, my hair is a disaster. But... I was, your, your, I was, your, your wife is a disaster? 
you know, I gotta say the, the best thing ever, hair bands. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't because, yeah, I don't think I need I, hair I, bands yet. Yeah. I, I just my before beard, all this, I was thinking I need to get my hair cut because I had bangs. And now I'm like, yeah, yeah I, I don't have bangs anymore. I, it's not quite long enough to braid, but we're getting there. This what goes long need, enough, and I'm going to be that guy that's bald with a ponytail. <laughs> Your hair is sliding back. What I find yeah, amazing, work all you. the people who are down. acknowledging <laughs> the fact that, okay, we are now finally going to see what everybody's actual na natural hair color is. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we've embraced this. A lot of people, yeah. uh, I mentioned before, I'm you know second laziest human being. I don't even bother. It's graying. It's fine. Um, I've earned every single one of those gray hairs. But I have friends who are like, yeah, wow. I forgot it was that color. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> but these are all you know. things that, you know, we're changing what we take for granted. We are changing yeah. what we expect. We're changing what we presume. Um, I have a birthday party to go to this evening. Um, you know, where she's setting up the, her camera by her fire pit and she's going to have a birthday cake with her kids and we're all coming. Yeah, nice. you know, one of the family things was a third birthday for our grand nephew out in Sacramento. And we all brought picture dinosaur pictures. And we went around, we all held our pictures up to our cameras so he could see the dinosaurs. Nice. And uh, it was great. And the yeah, my is you don't have to clean the whole house because you know we have to come over. Right. And we've yeah. also seen what our local newscasters houses look like. Yes. <laughs> yes. Or your local pastor or rabbi. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. And for me, all my fellow karate really, students, I know what their living rooms are like. One of the more interesting technological changes for me, telemedicine, I've been used to, but now we have televetinary medicine mm. where you put the cat up in front and, and I'll kind of you know, turn, look. And, um, you know, it's weird. Yeah. Um, that was kind of like, what? No, I'm going to show my tail. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and sometimes that's what the vet needs. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not taking my cat's temperature. He bites. No, all cats bite when you try that. Can't really blame them. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, our vet does, con you know, you you come out, you take the cat carrier. Yeah, it's a I cat vet, up. and leave it there, and they pick it up and they bring it in, and you can like zoom in and watch what they're doing and then they yeah. bring it out and leave it and you pick it up. It's, yeah. you know, we're all figuring out how to deal with things. Yep. Our ABC store has curbside pickup so I can reload my rye without having to see a person. Yeah. I find it is, I mean, I still go into some stores, um, yeah. but if I'm not comfortable there, I just walk out. Yeah. Uh, There's, there's one store that we frequent that we are not going to because I just we went it we realized we were not comfortable with they don't we didn't think they were doing enough to protect us and themselves mm -hmm. and and the food we were buying there so so we've been we've not been doing that but the, yeah any but the places that we go to that are make us you know feel comfortable and we feel that you know they're they're taking sufficient precautions and whatnot which is most of them yeah. Um, I mean, Beth this morning went to our grocery store because the curbside pickup, she couldn't get a, a reservation for that for like a week and a half. And there were yeah. a few things yeah. we needed before that. But they have the hour before they open is for older people and, you know, things like that. And so she was up this morning. So she went at like six or something or 630 when it was light enough for her to see. And went there and picked up a few things and came home with her mask and her gloves and keep it away from people. So you figure One of it things out. I've also noticed though is, and I don't know if you guys um, keeping in, in more of a city, a, a, a tighter uh, space city, because there's less traffic noise um, and because there are few people out. I, we haven't gotten that much wildlife, although in my neighborhood, we there are occasional sightings of not just bears but and, and deer, but we also have the occasional cougar wandering through. Um, but the birds are so much more active and so noisier. And I'm not sure whether it's we're hearing them more or they're actually coming out more. But I was like, 
what is that noise? What is it? We finally identified it. And then like, what is this, this, you should pardon my expression, who is this screaming asshole every morning? <laughs> and we finally determined, oh, it's um, apparently red-tailed hawk mating season. Ah. So, but it's been interesting hearing people talk much more aware of the animal life around yeah. them and talking about what they're seeing and people who are gardening more. Um, yeah. All of these things that, um, I mean, the, the, the great yeast shortage because everybody's decided that they have to learn how to make bread right now. But yeast is there. Well, it's because they can't find bread in the grocery. You know, you leave, <laughs> you leave <laughs> water and that. sugar we out, yeast will grow in it. Uh, yeah, I worked for a winemaker. Wild, oh, yeah. Wild yeast is slightly undependable. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. But the, the dice. <laughs> and if you live someplace where it's tends to black mold, please do not do this. Just don't. Good point. Um, yeah. But uh, for us, it's bread is, you can find bread. You just can't find yeast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We can't it, find paper towels. <sighs> Yeah, we I think we got over our panic buying about two weeks before you guys did or started it before you guys did. So we're starting to see where things are more on the shelves now. And well, it's starting of, to get that way here, too, a little bit. But, yeah. yeah, well, companies, companies also are companies are not doing things. as much commercial stuff. So they're doing it more to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we actually did something fun, which is we um, had been arranging a lot of the places you'd be going to farmers markets or sold directly to restaurants are now opening to general consumers. So a bunch of us got together and uh, put in a couple, a bunch of orders at a um, lamb rancher, farmer. I'm not sure if you ranch or farm lamb. And somebody picked it up down in Portland and did delivery drop-offs, you know, oh. random parking lots where you just pull off. Oh, nice. It's like be doing a drug deal for lamb. <laughs> we have one of our local restaurants a barbecue place has started selling produce they're still getting the yeah. stuff from the farms yeah that they yeah, were getting the they, didn't, that, they didn't want to stop that because that's hard on the farmers yeah. so they're still getting the stuff and then they're selling it curbside pickup to people you can order stuff there's a couple of uh our restaurants did that changing. we picked up some nice produce from a founding farmers restaurant our economy is changing uh, without quote unquote official notice. Yeah. Uh, things, uh, people are realizing that there are other ways to do things. Um, or they, they always knew, but now they're saying, oh, we can actually do this. And I think a lot of us are saying, this is actually a better way. Yeah. I also, they just have the time to do it if they're not, you know, they're working from home. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's easier. It's easier to cook when you're working from home, in yeah. theory, at least. Um, in theory, yeah. Yeah. But there By the are... way, Laura, and that lamb tangine look. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's going to be lunch for the rest of the week, I think. Yeah. Um, I have a freezer full of lamb. I've got to use it. Yeah. But it is it is again speaking from a social historian's perspective, taking a step back and seeing people for years. Employers are saying, "Well, no, we can't do telecommuting because it's just not as effective." I have friends <laughs> who work for companies that are the telecommuting, and they're discovering their productivity is going up. So this is a genie that may not be able to be put back in the bottle and shouldn't be put back in the bottle. Um, people are realizing that they can buy food different ways, that they can do different things. Hey, maybe I can actually grow something on my balcony. Um, and I'm really curious to see how much of that is going to stay and how much of that is going to become part of our culture going forward, both American and otherwise. Yeah. Um, I mean, already yeah. we're seeing, starting to see the normalization of wearing masks, which Americans resisted for the longest time and honestly would mock other countries for doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe, maybe not so dumb after all. <laughs> yeah, we're idiots. Um, and of course, you're going to have the people who still resist. But it's yeah. just this ongoing thing. And I'll admit, I've been taking notes. <laughs> see what people are doing, you know. Yeah. It's fascinating. I just wish we weren't living through it. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be a really interesting. My favorite of the people who will, who will. Yeah. My favorite of the people who will wear a mask but then just leave it dangling over their neck instead of over their face. And it's yes. like, really? Are, do you I'm wearing a mask. Neck? Well, I, I have to ask. I have to ask since both of you have beards. Yes. 
Because <laughs> apparently yes. the new style is clean shaven because it fits the mask better. It hasn't been an actually yes. the bigger issue. Go ahead. Yep. That yep. hasn't been an issue. The biggest issue has been the fact that I wear glasses and the damn things keep fogging up when I'm wearing oh, you, you, you need to wear glasses. Yeah. Yeah. But and then I, no, glasses over. The, the mask we have right now open up a little bit. So with my beard, if I can get it to here, mm. it's not having the problem. I'm thinking, am I going to have to shave at least the goatee part mm. and and keep my kind of 70s porn mustache <laughs> that I had for so long? And then so when you do that, you got to pay a guy to follow you around and play music on a saxophone. <clears throat> and that's difficult these days. Well, yes. they'd have to stay six feet behind. They're six feet yeah. away, yeah, right. Yeah. <sighs> but so far, so all the masks, all that I've... sister sent us masks and that can be washed. And so they can open up enough. I actually- mm. um... Yeah, my wife has been making masks. So, cause we have tons of fabric around and and, and she's been making them with little slots so we can stick uh, coffee filters in. Yeah. So. Yes, we've got some, um, those blue shop. Um, oh yeah, the shop rags, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've shop been, towels and last night I was talking to a friend of mine who is a structural engineer. And I was telling her about a friend of mine 3D printed um, some bands that go in the back across the back of your head, and you can rather than putting the loops over your ears, you put it on the band. Yes. Um, and they've been sending them to nurses and stuff because getting too much wear there. And I was telling her about this. I said, you know, it'd be great if they could do something face-wise. That you could just and so she's i have to remind her she's going to be doing up specs for me to send to my friend who has the 3d printers um so that you just wrap there, the mask around but you can still breathe and it gives uh, the there's bridge. a guy in our yeah. neighborhood found specs top, for an n95 mask mm -hmm. that it he can do like two a day if it goes mm -hmm. all day yeah. and night but there's some people in the neighborhood who are in healthcare and work in the hospitals. And so he's been making masks for them to, nice. you know, for them to yeah. use and all that. And he's, he posted on our neighborhood lips, listserv, the, you know, where to get the specs for him if anyone else has 3D printers. Yeah. It's, this has been one of those situations where, um, again, social right. historian watching the state level and the individual level and the community level rising to the challenge yeah. and looking at the for the good of the people and the good of the neighborhood and the good of those who who can't do for themselves um a lot of people are like oh i'm very depressed about humanity i actually feel better about humanity now than i have in in four years well, we always knew there were idiots out there, but now we're seeing there's yeah. people that aren't idiots and go out of their way to almost every time we go out for a walk, because we're very suburban where we are. Mm -hmm. One of the neighbors is saying, hey, because we look older and we are, if you guys need us to go get anything for you at the mm -hmm. grocery store, let us know. Be glad to do it. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, people aren't clumping up. I've seen neighbors talking to each other on either side of a driveway. And we're walking around and yeah. we have neighbors coming to their front door to say hi and talk to us, or they're working up at their second floor window and opening the window and talking My to us. My sister lives in a suburban neighborhood up in, in the Boston area, and their neighborhood has porch karaoke. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I was trying to think, because we do neighborhood get-togethers. <laughs> We yeah. do neighborhood parties all the time. We have a committee. I'm the president of our association, and we have a committee to do that. We're not going to be able to do that. They should be starting. And so I'm going to I'm going to talk to the committee and see if there's a way if we can figure out a way to do it where we can keep the distancing, mm -hmm. but still be able to get together, mm -hmm. like meet on a cul-de-sac and have chairs every six We've feet. Been, we have a parking lot in my in my condo complex, and people are when the weather's nice. This is Seattle, so it's iffy. Um, people will put their chairs out um, sort of in front of their cars. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's, it's basically like tail, you're tailgating um, yeah. just with a little more distance in between. Mm -hmm. Again, people are adapting. People are figuring stuff out. Um, yeah. There's, there are idiots. <laughs> um, 
there are not only there there are idiots who are only harming themselves or idiots who are harming other people. I ran into somebody with um, who was embracing all of the conspiracy theories, yeah. even the ones that contradicted each other. Yeah, and I'm just kind of like just stay six feet away. That's all I ask. Stay two miles away. <laughs> yeah, ideally. Yeah, it's 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 especially funny to to. Yeah, I mean, here in New York, people are, are I mean, we're, we're as, as packed in a group of people as you're likely to find. And we're, you know, keeping our distance. We're, we're helping each other out. We're, we're trying to make things work. Uh, every night at seven o'clock, we're leaning out our windows and cheering on people because that's been a thing here is, is basically at seven o'clock, people cheer, do a big whoop whoop for uh, healthcare workers specifically. Um, and I know that's gone on elsewhere in the country too. Yeah, um, yeah it's, around it's here been especially too. hilarious because the the karate classes that I've been taking have been at seven o'clock, and yeah. we open our karate class by <clears throat> kneeling down and quietly meditating. And of course, during the quiet meditation, we hear <laughs> in the background. <laughs> at, at Tacoma Park near here, one of sort of some of the people we play D and D with are in our last game. Seven o'clock came. And it was like, excuse us, we have to go out and bang some pots <laughs> right. and pans together. We'll be right back. I have to right. admit, I mean, it, it, that some of that's happening in Seattle, too. I have to admit, I keep thinking, instead of hitting pots and pans, can we go hit a couple of politicians who are still refusing to make sure that they get the you, equipment you, you, and, the raise, and the money they need? Yeah, instead of just that that thanking them, instead of thanking them, give them pay, give them equipment. Yes. The uh, problem is friend, they, um, they have, you have to get within six feet of them to hit them with a pan. No, no, oh, no. I'm, right. sorry. I'm sorry. We work in the fantasy field. You're telling, telling me you don't know anyone who has a pole arm. Fair point. Yeah. Oh, with that, martial arts, we've got bow staffs. We can do that. Oh, there you go. Yeah. A, the literal um, 10 foot pole. Yes. Yeah. I have I have a friend who is up. She's she's um, a nurse and she's up in New York. She's from Tennessee. She's up in New York now. Mm -hmm. um, another friend who's uh, an ER nurse in California. And yeah, no, I'm sorry. I I want to start swinging at politicians at this. Thankfully, not ours. Um, yeah. Being in Washington State is kind of a, a this this nice little enclave of sanity for the most part, most part. Um, but it's it's frustrating. It's like these you're willing to give money to soldiers when they go off to fight a war. Well, these people are fighting our war for us. Yeah. Why are you yeah. not getting them everything that you? Well, I know why they're not, but yeah, you will not go there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've been doing this for about an hour now. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going. <laughs> we, and, I, and I know I've hung out with you guys. I know we could do this all night. Yep. <laughs> and uh, but we probably should start wrapping it up. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of some science fictional way to kind of bring things back together or, but <laughs> do you, and I think we've been through that. Um, I want to let people know that we will be putting links to both Laura Ann and Keith's various social media and websites and YouTubes and all that stuff down there in the comments. Um, and I want to remind people to subscribe and like and up there, I think it is. Um, <laughs> and there's a little bell you can click on so you can get notified when there's more fast forward stuff and all that kind of stuff I'm supposed to say. Uh, <laughs> I'm so good at this. I'm like a professional. Um, but, Very much like one, yes. Yeah, kind of like one, but not really. Uh, <laughs> I want to thank you guys for joining us and I appreciate it taking time from your busy schedules to sit and talk about stuff and uh, you. thank you and stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe guys. You. Thanks for having us. And you this too. is Mike. Yeah. This is Mike Zipser from fast forwarding saying you guys stay the hell at home. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>